so we're having so we're just having Mark interview you. I mean, like I a conversation at home. Not really. <laughs> All right, are you ready? Are you ever ready for me? I'm always ready for you. I never know what to expect, but I'm always ready. <laughs> as ready as I can be. Okay. Hey everybody, J.M. Mannion here at the MPC Photo Gym. And back to do another Road to the Olympia is... Jennifer Dory, Miss Bikini Olympia. What year? 2021. And what other year? Hopefully 2023. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jen. Let's just go right to it. What are you doing or what have you done differently to get that title back? So last year, I kind of went in with a focus on bringing better conditioning. Conditioning has always kind of been one of my weaker points. And last year, we tried to bring in a more conditioned look. Um, a little bit too conditioned, a little bit too hard for what bikini is looking for. So we're going to dial it back a bit and kind of find an in-between of 2021 and 2022. So keeping that full round muscles, symmetry, balance shape, and just like a really full, healthy bikini look. So not too hard and not too soft. You know, bikini is like a tightrope. It is a dance. It is a dance. So yeah, it's just been doing a really gradual prep, trying not to come down too fast and trying not to be ready early, which is definitely a little bit of a mind because it's, it's hard when last year I was so lean so early. And, you know, Mark just keeps telling me, like, you got to remember that we don't want to be there that early. So it's, it's hitting the mark exactly for stage day that we can nail that fullness. Yeah. The cliche is it's a marathon, not a race. Exactly. Yeah. So I think it's actually, it's a marathon, not a sprint, but <laughs> or, or, yeah, you're right. Listen, I, like I rolled in at 9am this morning to be here to make sure that everybody from a, from a trip. He was flying all night. He slept <laughs> on the plane. <laughs> not enough. Not enough. I know I'm tired. Today. All right. So one of the things that, you know, with your physique, I've noticed over the years is you're one of the people that Whenever you do something, you have to do something for your upper body and your lower. They're, they're usually not in sync. And that happens to a lot of competitors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's it's just balancing that, that top to bottom and, you know, front to back as well. Just making sure we keep that symmetry. That the posing especially, making sure to nail that posing that I'm showing off my best shape. And again, not looking at anyone else's best shape because my shape is going to be different to someone else's. Right. And with the new Criteria videos that came out, I think that hopefully it cleared up a lot of things for people, right? Yes. I think it was very clear of what they wanted. I mean, Tyler used four of us as examples. And if you guys watched it, you saw what he said for me. He just wants me to come in not quite as hard, not as lean as last year, and just really have full round glutes was the main feedback. So, Well, that was one of your hallmarks. That's why Mark married you. <laughs> <laughs> True that. So full round glutes, you guys will see on stage this year. I'm excited. I think I've been able to bring up my shoulders a little bit and that'll just help balance out my lower half, but also my glutes, I think I've been able to improve too. So we'll see. Okay. All right. Let's get into why the MPC high roller doesn't have your name attached to it. It only has Mark's name on it. So it's funny <laughs> you say that because we actually just made an amendment to that so it now does say my name <laughs> it originally was mark sanction mark's been wanting to show for years um he's still gonna put your name on by the way he's 10 feet away from us I just know. so you know i know we, <laughs> we 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 busted him last year about it the whole weekend but yeah my name is on it this year december 2nd in las vegas it'll be an npc show so we're excited to see all you guys there hopefully and we're looking forward to doing another great show and then next year having Jam there. And we have a cool surprise plan for the overall bikini winner next year. Yeah, I mean, you're one of the few bikini Olympia champions that actually has their own contest. I mean, which is crazy to think about. Yeah, yeah, it was, it, it's pretty cool. And, you know, for us, it's an honor to have that show and to be able to give back to the athletes in, in another way as promoters. And also for us to be on the other side of the stage to see what goes on behind the scenes. So me stepping on stage as an athlete, I have the utmost respect for promoters understanding there's so much more that goes into it than we, right. than we know. And, and even on the men's physique side, I mean, yeah. I'm just in my head. I'm just trying to think of anybody else, men's physique, that actually has a name with, on their, the name of their contest. Is there anybody else, Mark, that you know of? Gio and Janet. But Gio's name isn't it. It's the Miami. So Mark, so Mark right. might be the first ever. He's always the first ever. <laughs> first ever Pittsburgh, first ever Olympia, right? I've told him for years. I, listen. 
I, and I said this, I said this to somebody in one of the interviews, I said, Mark has made a career out of being the first ever men's physique Olympia champion, Pittsburgh champion, go down the line. I go, you know, you have Jay Cutler, who is like, follow whatever he did for bodybuilding. Yeah. I mean, he's, I mean, he, he laid out the blueprint for everybody. He did. Right. And Mark followed now with men's physique. I mean, in all seriousness, I mean, you know, you, you take that, it's what you take that title and do with it. Yeah. It's how you, I mean, when you win the, when you win um, the Olympia for your division, you're an ambassador for the sport and your, your role is to promote the division, to grow the division and kind of to teach those coming up and just really spread the word about it because that's how the NPC and the IPB grows is being an ambassador. So like going around the world, going to seminars, going to shows and just being the face of the division is really important. So that's how we always try to, you know, really show up as much as we can. I mean, I know this interview about you, and I, I do bust on Mark a lot, but he's made a career out of doing that. I mean, more than anybody else I can think of off the top of my head for men's physique, honestly. No, for sure. And I mean, that's what he's kind of brought me along with and taught me as well, that, you know, we always, and, and whether you're a champion or not, you still do the same thing. Before I won the Olympia, I did that. After I won the Olympia, after I lost the Olympia, it doesn't matter. You know, you're still a face of the division, and there's still so many people that you can impact and inspire. So that's what it's all about. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how many times we run into each other at other contests, you know. Really All of a sudden, they're, yeah, they're, they're in the audience right there, which is great. Yeah, and we were, we were just with Sandy last weekend because we had a local um, Vegas seminar that we mm -hmm. did, which we do those pretty often, which is fun, too, just to see the local community. Right. So. Okay. So, Bikini Olympia this year is the only division that has four Olympia champions in it. And as I keep saying, that doesn't guarantee the top four right there. No, of course not. I mean, I honestly, I think there's quite a few girls that it could be anyone's game. It just depends on who comes in at their best. I feel like this year is probably the most wide open for that title just because there's so many possibilities and the talent is so high. You know, we have what, 50, is it 52, 52 qualified? Yeah. I think it's 52 girls qualified and each one of those 52 girls is going to bring something. They to the won. Yeah. That's what I tell everybody. This isn't like the old years. There's no point system. And I said, what it is is, after the qualifications for this year or last year, people started competing for this year, even before the Olympia happened, you know, so they're looking at from the Olympia on, but that's, there's that many contests, that, that many women won the shows. Exactly. And like you said, just because someone's won the Olympia in the past, it doesn't guarantee you a top spot. You still have to make sure that you're evolving with the criteria and listening to the feedback given. And I think Ashley is an amazing example of that. Like, this is her, what, 10th year anniversary from... Yes, it's 10 happened. year anniversary when she first won. What yeah. most people don't realize is that that was her first Olympia. Exactly. Um, yeah, so it's, it's just always keeping up with the division and the criteria and the feedback so you can always make sure that you're there because otherwise you'll get lost. And, you know, what won two, three years ago isn't necessarily what's going to win this year and even what won last year might not win this year. Well, and it's also, and I say this, and this, this applies to you, this applies yeah. to Ashley, to keep doing it at that high of a level mm -hmm. is not easy. No, definitely not. I mean, I think it's one of those things that it gets harder every year and I, I don't always mean physically. I think it's also like just the emotional as well, just because we put so much heart and soul into it. Well, it is, it is mentally too. Yeah, mentally it's tough. I mean, there's obviously a lot of pressure, especially when you've won the Olympia going into it. People have high expectations, but the only thing we can control is our effort. And if you give 100% every day, that's all that matters. Yeah, I mean, so like, like you said, I mean, even though you weren't this year's champion, you were still out there as the face of the division. Of course, because at the end of the day, like it's, that's still my role. That's still, I'm still part of the IPB Pro League. I still represent the bikini division. And, you know, once an Olympia, always an Olympia champion. Yeah, they can't take that away. No one can ever take that yeah. away. So, you know, it's something that, that's important to me to be able to still impact and reach people. So. Yeah, and I think you're the only Olympia couple that's married, right? I think so. Yeah, I think so, which is pretty cool. So, <laughs> Olympia royalty. Olympia royalty. Okay, I'll take it. I, you said it, not me. So, we'll and, and Canadian. And Canadian, I know, right? <laughs> I was loving that I texted you the picture of the fall here. They look so pretty with the yeah. the leaves and everything. It did look, I thought like maybe last year when you were here, you took it. It looks like around here right now. Yeah, it looked nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, you know, you get all those colors in Vegas at this time. Not. <laughs> that, that, that is the one thing that I really miss about the, the weather in Canada is I do miss the season changing because it's just so beautiful to see like the fall, the leaves and all the colors. Um, but the colds, it's okay. We'll keep that there. Yeah. All right, okay, so, so last year you could just drive down the street to the contest. Now we're going back to Orlando. Yeah. How are you feeling about that? I'm excited. Honestly, I loved Orlando. Like, 
Vegas is, is my home. It's where I live. But I feel like Vegas was a lot more stressful just because the strip is so busy. There's so much hustle and bustle. There's a lot of tourists. There's conferences. There's just so much going on. The F1 track that they're the track that, weaving through the town. Yes. And there's just so much going on that in Orlando, I feel like it was just so much calmer. And it was just, it was only us bodybuilders there. So I, I like that everything was in one place. So, and also Orlando was good luck for me. That's, that's where I won. So. I'm excited to be back in Orlando. So it is the, the week of Halloween. So Jennifer Dory, is the Olympia going to be a trick or a treat for you? <laughs> it better be a treat. <laughs> <laughs> no tricks, just treats. <laughs> no tricks this year, just treats. Yeah, my mom and sister are going to come out um, to watch me as well. So I'm excited to, to have them there. They actually came out to Orlando the year that I won. They got to see me win. So it'd be a very cool. Recreate the moment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this will be an even bigger moment. Exactly. It'll be an even bigger moment. So it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. And two weeks, this time has flown by. Yeah, here's the thing with the bikini division is Olympia champions who have lost a title, nobody has won it back yet. I know, that's why I'm working hard to be the first one to do that. I mean, that's history right there. It is, it is. And I think, you know, all of us are vying for that. And it, it just depends on who comes in the best that day. Like at that level, we know when we talk to the judges too, it's always so close like this that it could be the tiniest little thing. So it's just coming in your best that day and not worrying about what you look like two days before, three days before, two weeks before. It doesn't matter. It, what you show up on that day is what matters. That's right. Listen to what she's saying because it is the truth. Yeah. And everyone is going to have a different physique. So, you know, some people compare themselves on social media and, you know, you have someone who maybe stays lean year round. They're naturally a lot leaner and five weeks out, they look ready. And you have someone who five weeks out looks like, oh, are they going to be ready? They need five weeks. Exactly. But when you're five weeks out, that's the whole point. You're five weeks out. You don't have to be stage ready. So I think just focusing on your own journey is important and knowing your own body to be able to peak properly for that day. So I'm just going to be transparent with everybody here. I am going to be filming Jennifer posing, but you're not going to see it till right before she goes on stage, like a day or two before. Which is cool. I, I kind of like the the mystique of that, just keeping, you know, everyone's everyone's physiques a secret. And I think this year, a lot of us in the bikini division have kept everything on on a very, like, down low that no one really knows what anyone's looking like, which is fun because we just get to unveil our, our best physiques on stage and no one is trying to compete with one another's social media or, or anything. Well, I, I wanted to do for every, all the Olympia champions that have come through here and, and the top contenders and... Um, you know, I want people to say, oh, so this is what she looked like on this day, but now look at her on stage. Exactly. Or, you know, yeah, way. exactly. And I think that's what's great about us doing these Road to Olympias is that people see that, you know, that stage look, we peak for that day. And it's like when we're five weeks out, I've been here five weeks out and I don't look the way I look on stage at five weeks out. You know, two weeks out, I'm going to look like this, but then you see what I look like on stage. And I think it's, again, it's relatable for people who are coming up in the NPC and they might look at us on stage and feel like it looks so unattainable. And then you realize it's just... It's one step at a time, and it's that one day. And, and truthfully, it actually wasn't my idea. It was actually Derek Lunsford proposed that to me. Well, thank you, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's great also because... Well, no, well that's how he explained it, too. Yeah. He, goes, he goes, listen, they can get their sneak peek of me from my training videos. It's true. It's kind of fun to be able to just unveil a physique at the Olympia. Um, I think it also creates a lot of hype, a lot of momentum for people to want to go to the Olympia and to watch and just to be engaged because everyone is on the edge of their seats waiting to see what everyone else looks like. Right. So then, like I said, they can go like, oh, well, here's her video from or his video from X amount of days or weeks out. And then you go to the contest the next day and you go, oh, wow. Exactly. So there you go. Keep the wow factor. Keep the wow factor. And also don't psych yourself out looking at other people because I think... Um, I mean, I've, I've been pretty good now at learning to not do that anymore after competing for, what, nine years? So I think a lot of... Has it been that long? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Wow. Nine years. <laughs> this, this will be my sixth consecutive Olympia, my sixth year as a pro. So I met you six years ago. I've known you a long time. Know, since, I, <laughs> since I was 21 and I'm now 27, which is crazy. So yeah, yeah it's, it's been a great journey. I mean, I'm grateful to the NPC and the IPB Pro League, obviously, for everything that I've been able to do through my life because I would have never imagine that I'd be where I am today and, you know, met my husband, met so many great people, met you and just have a family in the pro league. So I'm going to get emotional, but I'm very grateful for it. Well, I just did kind of come up and start talking to you backstage in Canada. <laughs> it did. Actually, my, my pro debut at um, Toronto Pro Show and, and you were like, we got to do a photo shoot. It was with um, Laura Lee and Dara yeah. and we did Tampa Pro. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah. I remember walking backstage and go, hey, this looks like a photo, good photo shoot right here. And we made it happen. And honestly, that, that was one of the best photo shoots. That was a really fun photo shoot yeah. that we did at Tampa. So, 
All right. So is there anybody besides Mark? We already know that. You, no, I mean, that you want to give a shout out to because everybody knows that. <laughs> of course, my amazing husband, you know, he's here for me with everything. Um, I want to give a shout out to God because God is great and I always have to give glory to him and to the NBC NAPI Pro League. Like I said, you guys give us a platform to do what we do and to make a career out of it. And I think a lot of people don't realize that if you really maximize on you know, competing as a career, you can make a career out of it and you can build businesses off of it too. Um, of course, my sponsors, HD Muscle, I had to rep them today. Um, I have so many sponsors to list, so I'm going to give a, a quick little list. HD Muscle, Slim Time, Toxic Angels, Glam Competition, ProTan, MegaFit Meals. I have a whole bunch of amazing sponsors who help make this possible. So thank you guys. All right, so we know that people can meet you at the meet and greet on Thursday. Are you going to be working any booths over the weekend? So I think I'm going to stop by the HD Muscle booth on Saturday after pre-judging, kind of on my way out of the expo. I'm going to stop there, take some pictures. Um, not sure what time we're going to get off stage, probably between like noon to 2 p.m., I'd say, depending. I mean, yeah. things never run according to time. So, right. yeah, but hopefully you guys can come out to the meet and greet. I always have so much fun at that event and get to meet so many people. So. I mean, and I know your finals is Saturday night, and we all know that that's sold out. But I've been telling the people that watch this. The expo stage is, okay, I have to say, as an athlete competing, the expo stage, like just thinking about it, gives me chills. It is the most insane energy I've ever experienced, like, of anything. I don't even have words to say. Like, when, for me as an athlete, when I get to step on the expo stage and I just hear the crowd roaring, you just see the hundreds of thousands of people sitting out there it's a crazy feeling so and, and like, i've had people talk about the anticipation of waiting for that the numbers for that first call out right yes that and it's you know that's when you like you said we're not unveiling our physiques until the olympia so that's when you get to see the first look at us and if you're on the expo stage like you literally get to see right up close that first look of us we're right in front of you you get to see the first call outs and and that's where the majority of the judging is done if we're being honest like the expo stage is where they're moving people around where they're seeing what's happening and people are battling it out so the expo stage is is the fun part the finals is is just the awards or a confirmation of scoring round and the awards right but i mean it's still great to see that but of you want to you'll have a better understanding of who's probably going to be where by the time you hit the finals yes you might it you depends might. <laughs> So, you know, but it, but it, it is it, it is where the action really happens with the judging. It is. So, if, I mean, also the expo for those going to the expo. If finals tickets were unaffordable for you, the expo is much more affordable for a lot of people to go to as well. So, there are tickets available. I I would highly recommend to go and come cheer us on, give us that energy because when we step on stage, we feel and we absorb that energy, and it's just the best feeling. So, right. And worst case scenario, if you can't make it either, get the pay per view. Get the pay-per-view. It's worth it. It's going to be great quality. Um, there's going to be some great people who are going to be commentating on it. I think I saw Phil Heath is commentating on it. Um, so it'll be really cool. And I think, you know, if you don't, you're going to wish you did and you're going to miss out. So don't miss out on history. Okay. So J.M. Mannion. Jennifer Dory. Signing up for NPCNewsOnline.com. We hope to see you in Orlando at the Olympia.